Hey y'all, it's Uptown Narob, and I'm sober tonight. I think you guys deserve a, dis- a, a sober spreaker since I'm giving you two in a run. Well, okay, I know this morning, you know, I was off the cookies, right? But I mean, forgive me, okay? But today, we are going to finish up the Etta James Rage to Survive book, okay? I'm sad, but at the same time, excited for the next project, okay? But before we get started, hello, love bugs, hello, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already, a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube and for a small monthly fee of $5. You babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about the final part of Eddie James. Y'all, I know y'all can tell I got my retainer in. Some of you hudsies be mad at me like, why she slurring like that? Her fat tongue ass, her thick tongue ass. What's wrong with her? I got my retainer on, okay? You use retainers after you get finished done with your braces, hussy. And I, you know, haven't had my retainer on in a couple of days. And I'm trying to make sure my smile is right when I get in front of the camera this weekend, hussies. This time, the dope was legal. Turned out I got hooked on codeine. As a way of easing off coke, I used the stuff before, but never in great quantities. As time went on though, I grew more dependent on the pills, even if it took me a while to admit it. Pat Cannat, what's her name? Pat Canis had started working as my assistant. In addition to being my good friend, Pat's a trained nurse. She was in charge of all my medication, except for them codeine pills, okay? That was her secret stash. Uh Uh-huh, you can give me my pressure pills, Uh uh-huh, my arthritis pills, my cholesterol, you know, all of that. But these codeine pills, hold on, I I got to do it. These codeine pills. Shout in my cholesterol pills, not codeine pills. But these codeine pills, they mine, okay? So she was hiding her addiction from everybody, even her assistant nurse or her nurse assistant. So anyway, let me just tell you the story about how Etta James realized that she was addicted to the pills, okay? Thinking that, okay, this is gonna be my way to wean myself off of codeine. But one of you guys in the comments had told me that codeine actually has the same effect as an opioid. I'm like, yeah, oh my goodness. We have got a serious opioid crisis right now, okay? It's taking me back to the old days when even the young people were hooked on, you know, heroin and, you know, doing that skin popping and stuff like that. I mean, young, like 13, 14, like the wire in Baltimore type young, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, let me tell you how this girl knew that she was addicted on pills. And, and, and one, before I go forward, I'm like, Joe, how was you not addicted on anything that you've ever done? You are an addict. You will be addicted to any and everything, right? So anyway, this girl fell asleep. She took a nap, okay? She's sweating in her sleep, okay? She tripping. She dreamt she could not find her uh, coding pills. So she, inside her dream, frantically calling crazy or calling people crazy, like doctors, like random doctors. Doctor, you didn't get my pills. What the hell are my pills? Like accusing people of all kinds of craziness, right? But it was a dream, okay? Luckily, it was a dream. But then when she woke up, the dream came true because she could not find her actual pills. This bitch is tripping, okay? She's starting to see dragons in the air, right? She finna run up and down the street butt naked, accusing maids and uh, crossing guards of stealing her medication, okay? Now, because she can't find the pills, not in her dream, but in the reality, the next morning that she woke up after that crazy ass dream, she tripping. She like, oh my God, you know what? Fuck it all, okay? Uh, 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 I can't find my pills. Fuck it. Where's the next uh, dope fix at? Now she ready to take her thing all the way back 
to where she was shooting heroin again. Okay. That's what one of you people said to me that basically by her taking that codeine, she took herself right back to square one. You know, I don't care if it's heroin. I don't care if it's coke. I don't care what it is. You know, it, 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 listen, all of it is a trigger for an addict to me. I don't care if it's, you know, even weed is a trigger or a gateway drug. Not like that, you know, how people be like, oh, it's a gateway drug. No, nigga, we don't work like that. You don't wake up, uh, y'all, I had some coffee today, some real coffee, so my bad. You don't wake up, you know, drinking Sanka. And then the next day you shooting horse. No, it don't work like that. You know, they'll tell you that to try to fool you, but answer no. Come to find out that the drugs were actually in her robe pocket. So she then started accusing people, tearing up her room, acting a whole nigga because she couldn't find them pills. And all along, it was in her road pocket, okay? Now she realizing, okay, maybe I need to go to another place. I'm too ashamed to go back to Tarzana, so let's try this Betty Ford clinic, right? I went to Betty Ford out in Palm Springs. Turned out to be the perfect place for me, teaching me things I never learned in Tarzana. The Betty Ford, the Betty Ford has a way of making people look good. Everyone's tanned with bleached hair and healthy smiles. Even the little old lady alcoholics with their blue hair and wrinkly skin are sitting in the sun chilling out. At Betty Ford, you soon learn that everyone, even the prim and proper housewives with their cultured pearls and Gucci warm-up suits, has secret medicine chests. Everyone is hooked on something. We've been through that child. Didn't you see Lucille Ball in that Vitamita Medjamin uh, episode? Y'all remember that? When Lucy was trying to get in the show business and she had did a commercial. And the commercial was like 92% liquor. And she drinking a Vitamita Medjamin on camera. And coming to find out that shit is all drunky poo. Okay, but we knew that. Why I ain't take her forever? But then you know Etta James, she a diva, okay? That's crazy to me. How, well, she a dope diva, right? So anyway, one of the things that she hated about the Betty Ford Clinic was that uh, they would make her go all the way over to the other side of the campus to get her pills, right? The people would knock on the door and be like, Miss James, Miss James, it's time to get your medicine. She opened the door mad, hungry. Why I got to go all the way across the campus to get my damn drugs? Because, ma'am, that's what we need you to do. We need you to get moving and get healthy. Because Etta James has said previously that she is a very lazy person. She can sit in the house all day, not go nowhere, flick the channel, and watch soap operas all... No, 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 no. As my grandmother called it, my stories all day and be just fine. I cried out a lot to my private therapist at Betty Ford when I discussed Dorothy. Dorothy hated artists and had been threatening him something awful. We even had to get a restraining order to keep her from the house. That broke my heart. My mother hadn't changed. She was still moving to a different motel every few days, but I still harbored the hope that one day we would reconcile. I hated the fact that we were still at each other's throat. And then there was also the unfinished business of my father. All these years, I clung to the thought of meeting Minnesota Fats and trying to figure out one way to one way or the other whether he was the one. By the time I got out of Betty Ford clean and sober and equipped with a new self-understanding, I felt strong enough to give it a try. The title I gave my first album on Island Records because it depend. Oh, wait, wait. The Seven Year Itch. That's the title I gave my first album on Island Records because it's been seven years since I recorded a, with a major company. OK, now she's working with this dude called Barry Beckett. He's a producer. He and this dude named Rob Forbani also helped produce three track, tracks. I knew Barry as a slick keyboardist from Muscle Shows who'd gotten his producer chops from Jerry Wexler. Unlike Jerry, though, Barry's a pussycat 
in the studio. I told you, you know, she thinks that Jerry Wexler is a tyrant and a monster. I don't know about all that, because Riri said something different. Girl, maybe at a uh, at a girl, maybe you ain't had the same effect on Jerry Wexler the way that Riri did, okay? Because he cowered to Riri. He didn't want that smoke from Riri, okay? Or maybe Jerry Wexler just didn't want the smoke from Teddy Pimpy Whitey. Mm, eh, so that may be it too. In the back of my mind, I had a secret reason for choosing Barry Beckett. Barry lives and, work, and works in Nashville, and Nashville is where Minnesota Fats had been living since 1984. Now this was crazy to me, the way that she explained what her um, father was doing in uh, Nashville, was it, it kind of put me in the place where remember where they had Tyson like sparring in Las Vegas inside of a cage like he was some kind of spectacle, like a, a zoo animal to be put on display or something. She said that her father had been, and I'm saying her daddy, that's right, I'm saying her pappy, God damn it. okay, and I'm secure with that. Now, we ain't got to the part whether it's yes or no, but I'm secure with it. Because if I ain't never seen a woman that looked like uh, a white man, Eddie James looked just like that white man. Fuck all that, okay? She, she even looked like Jackie Gleason, the white man who played Minnesota Fact in the movie The Hustler, okay? But at any rate, she said that he was living in a hotel room for $12 a night, and he was almost like a tourist attraction. You know, they would set up a pool table, in the middle of the lobby or the floor, and you would have Minnesota Fats just down there shooting pool. It's a spectacle. Like, I'm not your uh, display. Now I see why. Oh, y'all, I'm about to go to the left. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sober. I swear to God, I'm sober. But look, whenever I go to the zoo, right, because I'm the type of person when I'm single, I don't like sitting around and doing nothing. I don't like doing that. I'll take myself to the movies. I'll take myself to get something to eat. All the things that I, you know, haven't done yet. I'm not gonna wait for nobody to go with me. I do that shit myself. I don't even know if I go with me. If you're on board, let's go. If you're bullshitting, bye. But anyway, when you go to the zoo, do y'all notice that the animals, it's like they not shy. It's like they all hover like in the corner with their backs to you. Like, man, get the F out my face, man. Get them cameras out my face. That's part of the reason why I don't really mess with the zoo like that. I love to go to see the animals. But at the same time, when you get there, you see the dolphins, they do it. The elephants do it. The monkey cage, they do it. Every animal exhibit like basically hides from the spectators. So, you know, I, I know you're like, what the heck? But anyway, let's get into the conversation. I gathered up my courage and I called the hotel. They put me through to Minnesota Facts. Minnesota Facts, I asked with my heart pounding. pounding. Yes, he said in a gruff sounding Italian street voice. This is Etta James. Do you know who I am? Yeah, I know. Come on over tomorrow, round two. Tararo will be just fine. All right, Etta said. Now, when she said she met her father, um, she said that, you know, he was older. You know, he looked just like her. Um, he stared at her with eyes, you know, like, you know, when, like that Scooby-Doo look, like when you tilt your head to the right, like, huh? could it be, you know? And he was looking at her with, those eyes that were her eyes, she saw herself in Minnesota Facts, right? And she started asking him questions, not many questions, but what he did ask her about was Dorothy, okay? I asked him if he remembered hanging out with Willie Best and the, at the Queen Elizabeth apartment and the sporting life on Central Avenue in the 30s. And he said he did. He remembered. He was there. I was on the verge of asking him about Dorothy Hawkins, who he knew, I'm sorry, Dorothy Hawkins. He knew the question was coming. And before I could ask it, he said, I don't remember everything. I wish I did, but I don't. When I left, we just shook hands. Didn't hug, didn't kiss. 
He never told me he was my father, and I realized that was because he really didn't know. But looking in his eyes and watching him look in mine, I had no doubt we were connected. Girl, you're more than connected, okay? Do you know how many ninjas, see now or not see now, say they don't remember, okay? You be like, uh, do you remember that time in 1994, you know, and she walking with a son that looked like he was born in 1994? That nigga gonna look at you and say, no, I don't remember, okay? You asking, even when you got the police on the stand, you know, and the judge is asking the police questions, the police favorite answer is, I can't recall, okay? That's what they all say. I can't recall. I don't remember. Girl, if you get me hemmed up in a corner, I hit your ass with, uh, I don't remember, okay? So, as far as I'm concerned, that's her pappy, okay, Etta? Now, I know you probably just let it go because you ain't want to press the issue, you know, and you dang on sure don't want to press no white man, you know, with that. But that's her father. Minnesota Fats is her pappy. Fuck all that y'all talking, okay? I, I'm, not, I'm not happy, you know, and just because he said he don't remember don't mean that he ain't the pappy. He the dang on pappy. More film work came my way. I sang Baby, What You Want Me To Do in Gregory Hines' Tap. Oh, I remember that movie. I wrote something called So Young, So Bad, So What for Reform School Girls, a bad girl movie I could relate to. Dave Stewart of the Eurythmics asked me to do something for Rooftops, a film he was scoring. So, oh, and plus MCA had bought the chess catalog and was cutting new contracts, fair contracts with the original artists like me. The chess catalog was being pri pirated like crazy all over the world. Hell yeah, it's called bootlegging, girl, bootlegging. Packaged by companies who stole the recordings and like Leonard himself never paid royalties. MCA was going after the pirates and actually paying me royalties for reissues. Money was coming in steadily. Ooh, thank you goodness. I took a cue from the old song and moved to the outskirts of town. Fact is, I kept the fort, but moved out of South Central down the freeway some 60 miles to Riverside in a suburban home in the hills. After a life of ripping and running, the burbs didn't bother me. We bought a ranchette with little land in the back, a swimming pool, room for the dogs to run around, and a pool table in the middle of the house, as if I expected my father to drop by for a quick game. Okay, you see how she said my father right there. See, she said it. She said it. She know that man is her pappy. He the pappy. You can sit in a den and watch the sunset on the mountain on the mountains turning everything gold and not worry about a damn thing. It was peaceful, even though Dorothy decided to move out there with me. She rented an apartment couple, a couple of miles away and continued to give me hell. Hmm, okay. Oh girl, this tripped me out, right? This tripped me out. So she did the Grammys, right? Now she was nominated, but she knew she wasn't gonna win, but she did perform. She said she felt like the Grammys gave her a bucket of chicken and a watermelon. Oh, no, 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 wait. A bucket of chicken, a watermelon, and $2,000. That's it. She said she didn't even understand the reasoning for it because she had been nominated so many damn times, and she thought it was a slap in the face to have her up there to actually sing, even though she's nominated this time, but she knew she wasn't going to win. She said, oh, don't do that. Oh, did I tell you that they gave her a new gown? They gave her a bucket of chicken. Or she said she got, she felt like they gave her a bucket of chicken, a watermelon, and a watermelon for payment. But what she actually got was a new gown and $2,000. That ain't enough for me to keep going to your damn show and I ain't winning nothing. She said she went through the same thing with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. After years of talk of how close I was being, mm, mm, Rewind. I went through the same thing with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. After years of talk of how close I was to being inducted, I finally made it in the 90s, and only because of Jack, Jerry Wexler campaigning for me so hard. I felt less conflicted about the NAACP award 
Image Award I won. Yeah, because you can always rely on the blacks to take care of our own. I, you know what? I don't even know. Anyway, I don't know. I'm going to leave that alone. That was coming from my own people, and I cherished the recognition. I remember bumping into Miles at the ceremony. This was at the Swanky Theater in L.A., and he was with his wife at the time, Cicely Tyson. But dig this. Dig the fuck out of this, okay? I was shocked to see Miles' eyes looking so old. He was walking with a cane, but his far out clothes kept his cool. Cicely loved that bougie shit, he said, but I hate it. Got anything to get high with? I said, oh my God, look at prim and proper Cicely to Tyson. Did she know her man, Miles to Davis? Was walking around with a cane, asking Etta Jane for anything to get high with? Mm, 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 mm. Etta Jane's responding, I ain't getting high no more. The ninja walked away. I'm sorry. He limped away. Okay, 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 girl, okay. In addition to getting me into the Hall of Fame, Jerry Wexler got me another album deal in 1992, this time with Bob Krasnow of Elektra. Settling into late middle age, as I write this, I'm 56. I suppose I'm still raging. I know I still have a lot of bad feelings against myself. Take my performances. Fans will see me kicking off my shoes and stomping on stage, turning my backside, sticking out my butt, and shaking it like a fool. I rub my hands all over my body and roll my tongue and play like a slut. Ooh, girl, ooh. She said, but for years now, weighing over 350 pounds, that has threatened her health and her happiness. Okay, one of y'all told me that she had a lot of uh, issues or health issues too. And for her to have, oh, damn, one of y'all told me it wasn't 76, it was 78. Now for a woman to experience the life that she had and she made it to 78 oh my goodness somebody was praying for this girl you know when people be you know that reckless with their life you know it's always somebody up in heaven praying for them you know how that is after a lifetime of nasty battling Dorothy and I have come to a certain peaceful understanding at least for now It took me years, maybe my whole adult life, to do something I'd always longed to do. Dedicate, dedicate an album to my mother in 1993. I signed up with private music and told the president, Ron Goldstein, I wanted to record my first all jazz album, concentrating on songs associated with Billie Holiday, Dorothy's Idol, Great Etta. Ron encouraged me. No one will do it better. Y'all, okay, so look, y'all. Oh, my God. So y'all don't know this, that I love Billie Holiday with all my heart. I do. You know, and I'm kind of confused as to do I just love Diana Roth as Billie Holiday. But then, you know, I love y'all know I'm a, a, a DeBoss fan. But even when you take Diana Roth out of the picture, the music from the soundtrack just sends me y'all. She said she did songs like Don't Explain and You've Changed. Oh my God, let me tell you something. The only person that can do Billie Holiday better is that goddamn Mickey Howard. Oh my God, that is the most, oh my God. I, she had her time, she did, she went through her issues. My Libra sister, okay, I love her. But when I tell you she can do and be Billie Holiday, matter of fact, she played Billie Holiday. What was it, y'all? Was it in Malcolm X? Let me know. Ooh, she also did The Man I Love and Lover Man. Oh, pure, pure, pure Billie. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. She is magnanimous. So she said, I wanted to be associated with this particular woman. So I called the record Mystery Lady. And much to my surprise, I won my first Grammy for Best Jazz Vocal. 
After 40 years of singing R&B and blues, it was funny to finally win a jazz, to win as a jazz singer. No matter, I was glad. I accepted the mystery. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people oh, wait, that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves, you babies, have a good one. Peace.